a lot of people, they understand what an expeditionary force is. You know, an expeditionary force, the kind of group of military, oh, I don't know, you could call them infantrymen if you want, or some type of group of people that have been assembled together in order to go out into an expedition. Now, an expeditionary force has been used in the military for militaristic reasons. But really, the idea behind an expeditionary force is simply the idea that you've got some people as a force going forward on an expedition. They are out to do something or to accomplish something or to be something. Doesn't that sound familiar? I dare say, maybe, God has called you to become an expeditionary force in the world or in the place that you live in. Preaching in the park, we're kind of dealing with different themes and topics. When we go to the park, we like to enjoy the park, and I'm sitting next to a ashes of a fire that had consumed almost all of the wood that they put in, but obviously they cooked something on it. Probably enjoyed it, ate it. It's kind of what I like to do. I like to eat things and enjoy them and discover and uncover exactly what it is that, you know, maybe it tasted like or that it seemed to be worthy of spending all that time in order to devour. The Word of God is like that. I have a little Bible that I carry around all the time. You know, it's just kind of a little tiny Bible. It's got a little snap, you know, kind of fun to do. Today, I wanted to introduce in two ways. First of all, was simply to say, hey, you know, we have our own little thing going here, which we're calling, of course, the, you may think it's being called the Expeditionary Park or Expeditionary Force, but really, we're just talking about preaching in the park, what we're really concerned about. Preaching in that and teaching in that with which we've been given. Those places and things that, you know, God has us to do. And so, because we're in the park, I like to get up and go to the park. You know, get out in the sun, sometimes sit in the shade, sometimes take a walk in the park. You know, maybe sit on the grass, maybe enjoy the grass. You know, be a part of that with which is available to me free. You see, parks have been given to me free in order to wind down from what winds me up. And a lot of times, that's what people forget when they go to, or they think to, maybe share the gospel that they call the gospel instead of the good news. Because they don't really, when they're preaching, think of it as being winding down. Dare I say, a lot of people want to wind you up. And so, I wanted to introduce this new series of people because really what we want to do in talking about and really using as an example of where we're at and where we're coming from is what do we do as far as enjoying preaching in the park? We want to reach a level of understanding, don't we? With which we know that we are sharing what we believe in to people that don't believe in Maybe the same things we believe in. Isn't that what you want to do when you preach? You're telling people about something you want to preach? Now, teaching is a little different. Teaching is maybe saying or trying to invoke a response from a person. Trying to educate. Trying to illuminate. But preaching, I always think of as promoting and reaching. The P for promoting and the rest of it, you know, reaching. You're promoting to reach out something with which you have, which is information. So a lot of times I use the word preach in order to think of it as a promotion. You're promoting something. You're preaching the gospel, obviously, but you're promoting something. You have a reason why you're doing what you're doing. And I imagine that if the reason why you're doing something is the gospel, then it probably should be the kind of like laid out what you call the gospel and what maybe someone else calls it differently. Maybe your gospel isn't my gospel. Maybe your salvation isn't my salvation. Maybe that with which you're teaching or preaching isn't the same thing that I'm doing. And that's why we're going to start this series called Preaching in Part, because we kind of want to take a look at what people are saying 
and what people are doing. Because, you know, I don't know about you, but, you know, when I go to the park, when I take a look at things like this, when I can see a big old oak tree, I think you can see the oak tree. When I consider the fact that that oak tree's been here a while, you know, it's got big branches. Man, they just reach way up there. You know, and that oak tree technically gives shade to those with which come under its branches. Which is really where I'm at is that I'm kind of enjoying the oak tree. I'm kind of enjoying the fact that it's giving me shade. Matter of fact, I don't know exactly what the oak tree was designed for, but I know that its wood is hard. I know that it doesn't get knocked over easy. I know that it produces shade even in the midst of the heat that I'm in right now. It's over 100 degrees out. Don't feel so bad to me. That's kind of what I'm wondering when we start this series about preaching in the park, is that are we promoting something or are we reaching out with something? Are we sharing something or are we just enjoying the sound of our own voice? Because you see, I'm enjoying what that tree is supplying. And as long as that tree has shade, I'm sitting under it. But you know, if the sun was beating down on my head right now, I wouldn't be sitting under that tree. Matter of fact, I'd probably be heading for shade. And that's kind of what I wonder about, you know, in a lot of people's gospels. Are they providing shade? Or are they promoting a problem? You see, I really don't know quite what the facts are sometimes when I hear people tell me about their gospel message. They'll tell me sometimes about all this sin and, you know, tell me all these theological terms, you know, and I agree, you know, there's there's sin in the world, you know, I mean, quite frankly, you know, if I was kind of looking at sin, you know, I'd probably have my own list of what I think sin is, you know, God has his list. I'm sure you have your list, and I'm sure my mother had her list. Matter of fact, just about everybody I know has a list for sin, you know, one state says it's illegal to do something, and other states says it's legal. How do I tell what's sin? I mean, quite frankly. If I'm not a Christian, and I don't want to, you know, deal with God, you know, and I'm not a Christian, then, you know, why is this sin so important to begin with? The truth is, unless I'm wanting to deal with someone who's defining it, hey, it ain't that important to me. It's like, well, that's nice, I'm glad, and they leave. And I wouldn't blame anyone, because you see, the whole idea behind these people that were trying to do a user-friendly gospel was that they were trying to relate information by way of coming to a comprehension together with some people that wanted to talk about something that maybe they weren't ready to make a decision on, but they wanted to talk about it anyway. So it got all confused, and it got all abused, and sure enough, oh, the button. it got lost in the translation, as most things do when people get involved. But when God is involved, you know, you don't have much of a confusion about it, like the oak tree. I can take a look at that oak tree and I can say, wow, that's shady. Wow, that's awesome. In fact, when I look at that tree, I kind of admire the tree. That's kind of what I wonder about, you know, maybe in this series we're starting, when we do this preaching in the park, if maybe we've lost the essence of the message. You know, we're still focusing in on preach, 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 and we want to reach, reach, reach. So what are we really promoting? That's what we're going to talk about when we talk about what this video is about or what this new series, Transcend, is about. Because although this one is called Transcend and it's number one, we're just really doing an intro to talk about things that transcend explanation, that transcend our limited realization that maybe, maybe there's more to what we think we're doing than we are doing, or more that should be done that we're not doing, or maybe more that 
is going on behind the scenes than meets the eye. Maybe there's more that transcends our understanding and comprehension, and we need to seek, find, and ask to really realize more about what God wants for us to do, especially in the ministry of video when it comes to preaching in the park. So Transcend is going to be about that, but Transcend really is more into the other area that I wanted to talk about, which preaching in the park is just the generalization of taking video off of the shelf and putting it in the park. You get it? Preaching in the park, coming out of the office, into the place, into the park. And so we want to present maybe a little different way of thinking about things, maybe a little different way of doing things than you're comfortable with or maybe you're used to doing. I want to talk. I want to sit down at a picnic table, you know, and I want to share and care and be there with some people that maybe, maybe they won't, you know, agree with me or agree with the talk or the topic. But we're going to sit down and probably eat together and talk together and maybe share things together. And that's what we're going to do in the park with preaching in the park. That's part of what we're doing with the new video series about not only taking it to the streets, but preaching it in the park. There's one other part of that that's going on too, which you'll find out about next video that gets released. But in this one, I wanted to cover the other topic. Something else that comes to my mind that really I have the opportunity to bring up in this video that I wanted to quickly kind of like maybe get off of my chest, so to speak. You know how that is. When you got something that's bugging you, when you have something you want to talk about, you know, you want to pray about, you know, usually you want to go to the Lord and say, hey, what's up, God? What's happening? How come it's doing this or that's going on or what is this or what is that? Well, maybe we don't all talk to God like that. Maybe none of us do. Maybe some of us do. But that's kind of where I wanted to talk. You see, I kind of like to, uh, I don't know if you can see this, but um, I like to come to the water. Maybe you can see that we're near water. Maybe you're going to understand that uh, this is kind of based upon some things that transcend your usual, typical meeting place. Maybe you'll comprehend that some of the things that you've understood for so long about the way to do things could be done better. Could be done in a way that transcends the normal way of doing things. Maybe you've never thought of taking your tech device and using it for the kingdom of God's sake. Maybe you've never thought of getting out and getting away and getting real with God. Maybe it's time to transcend the boundaries that maybe you have on God, that he might inspire you, that he might be taking you to a place you've never dreamed of. A good, good, good personal friend of mine, a pastor's wife, a girl by the name of Julie Langfield, wrote a song that said, Come away with me, my love, to a place beyond all reasoning. Partake within your heart of my perfect peace. I desire for you to know me in a way you've yet to taste of. Let me pour myself upon you, enter in. And she sang it for me one last time before they retired and they kind of moved out of ministry and basically have kind of stayed out of the limelight, so to speak, now. But I remember how I bawled and cried like a baby because I used to be so touched by that song because I went through so many years of suffering that God wanted me to go through the way of suffering, which is a long story, in order to understand some of the things that the old classics used to say as far as coming up with this whole idea of there being a fellowship of his suffering. I wanted to know what that was. Transcend will be discussing suffering. But transcend is going to talk about other topics. And the reason why we use the word transcend isn't some, you know, Eastern Occidental kind of meditation kind of craze guru thing. But it's because the pastor today was teaching on transfiguration. Ooh, the Mount of Transfiguration. Dare I say that there's more that went on there than meets the eye. There's more that you don't comprehend than what you do comprehend. And Transcend is going to discuss topics like that. We want to appreciate and we want to 
get to a place of better knowing Jesus in a more personal and intimate way than we ever have before. But in order to do that, while we do have video for that purpose and design, we do have the new taking it to the streets for the gospel. We have the new video ministry avenue of meditation and some of these other topics that don't have the word video in it and kind of talk in a different way. There's one other thing that was left out that I really wanted to approach in a more personal way. And we need to transcend into an area that isn't comfortable, that maybe isn't conformable to your personal belief system right now. And maybe there's something that you avoid like the plague, like I used to. As a matter of fact, one of the things that used to give me the willies was that I went to Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa. You know, the big church way back when. And it was a big church back then. You know, I mean, it was pretty big. You know, it's called a mega church, but, you know, they are bigger. And uh, one of the things they had on Wednesday night that I went to a couple of times, which was very interesting. By the way, in case you're wondering, i got to throw this in. I'm looking at a tiger swallowtail. There's a reason why I'm mentioning these things, because you're going to find in your experience with me some very unusual occurrences that are going to happen. Some very definite symbolic gestures that God is going to do to, put it bluntly, blow your mind. And it's not going to be planned. I'm sorry. It's not going to be set up. It's not going to be abused, confused, or used in some way that God didn't design it. It's going to happen because, quite frankly, it happens to me every day. And that's why we call this transcend because I kind of, I don't know how to tell you this, but it's going to get interesting for you because if you do watch transcend, you're going to learn about things that maybe you don't know about that you think you do. And maybe you've never thought about, but you should be thinking about. Some things that possibly have uh, been misapplied and maybe somebody else's teaching methodology or somebody else's way of looking at things. You know, kind of like the supernatural. Oh, we call it supernatural. I mean, we don't have a better word to put on it. Because we think that this is natural. Well, hmm. hey, it's nature. <laughs> That works, but it's nature under a curse. And I don't think that's so much supernatural as it may be cursed natural. Or the Jewish way of saying it is it's naturalist or it's animistic or it's of nature. And there are certain designations that they have in Jewish culture that maybe, maybe because you've never approached it from that point of view, you limited yourself to one point of view without expanding yourself to another point of view that I want to bring up something maybe you and I never thought to do. Let's ask God. Oh! There's a novel approach. Let's talk to God about it. And quite frankly, when you get into Transcend, you're going to be looking at the whole kid and caboodle, but you're going to look at the story of the transfiguration a whole lot closer. It's going to make a lot more sense. You're going to look at what Paul said about you know being out of the body or in the body a little bit differently. You're going to think about Elisha and his way of dealing with being protected a little maybe more personal than you thought. In other words, Transcend is going to deal with the supernatural as though it were the natural, because that really is what God is doing. God intervenes in our lives every day. I'm sorry. You know, I I understand pastors that want to play it safe, and they want to keep you into this. And I'll be honest with you, there are a lot of pastors that want to. I mean, they want to keep you safe from 
getting off into error or getting off into tangent and getting off into, you know, those things with which, you know, are way beyond our comprehension so that you don't put the experience above the word or the word above the experience or get it all confused. Well, John went into heaven and he was confused. Dare I say. So he wound up recording what he's got and he got it. If you think you can accept the book of Revelation as it is the way it's written, good. Because that's what it is. You can't. There's a system that's meant to keep you right here. Now, I agree. To prove all things, to explain all things, we should use the Word of God. And that's what I use. You know, I'm a Calvary from way back then. And Vineyard versus Calvary was that, you know, Vineyard wanted this experience kind of thing. Calvary wanted the Word first kind of thing, you know. Somewhere in between, Jesus is going, uh, guys, you know, you're playing a tug of war with me. I'm being pulled from both sides, you know. What about if I just, boom, transfigure in front of you? Oh, the Mount of Transfiguration. When Peter, James, and John, by the way, James in Hebrew is Jacob, so you could go with that a long way. And Peter usually represents kind of like the Gentile sort of speak, you know, you know, long story. But John kind of represents an interesting one too. But we'll just not even go there. Besides that whole aspect of just dealing with some of those things that you can just say, well, you know, I don't do the symbolics, I don't do this and I don't do that. <coughs> what do you do? Can I ask you this? What do you do if you go up on a mountaintop? You know, you go on a mountaintop. No, I mean when you go on a mountaintop and you say, okay, God, where are you? God says, here I am. Shut up! No, really. What happens? You start a Mormon church? Uh, that's not what the Mormons do. What if you, as a mature believer, what if you, knowing the Word of God, your Bible, what if you, in a foreign country, pick someone up and raise them from the dead? Oh. My. God. Exactly. What if you walk on water? What if you suddenly discover and uncover the miraculous in the mundane? Uh, God, you're screwing up my understanding here. I like mammon. I like everything man has made. We keep covering up everything so that we can make it understandable and we can be more like the world and its ways instead of like, you know, connected to you and your kingdom. Wait a minute. Am I confusing those two? So you see, transcend is going to transcend. Now, I do expect there to be some really interesting kind of discussions about that. Because I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I'll, I'll present material to you that, quite frankly, confuses me to this day. I'm going to tell you about my experiences with God, my personal experiences with Jesus, my personal experience with the Father, and my most recent personal experience is with starting this series that I've been teaching on the Holy Spirit from Chuck's book, the Holy Spirit series. Why Grace Changes Things. Or no, the Holy Spirit series is the... What I have is uh, Living Water. Well, I started it and then I stopped it because it got kind of interesting. So I started kind of like intervening, you know, and I kind of went, uh-oh. And I had to kind of take a step back and go, am I willing to go the rest of the way with God? Am I willing to die for self? Am I willing to be crucified? Am I willing to, you know, like, hey, really, you know, I mean, Lord, you know, you've already messed me up with all the things you've shown me for me. Now you want me to mess people up with what they think they know about you and say, hey, you know, Deal with it, you know, talk to God about it, or, you know, read your Bible, study it, if it's not there, if it, you know, if it's there, you're going to be dealing with a living God, Jesus alive, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the reality of the person that, yes, quite frankly, there's, on that side of the bridge, demonic, that side of the bridge, earthly, Somewhere coming down from heaven is heavenly and uh, 
this is the only manual we got? No! Help! So that's what Transpose is about. Transpose is going to presuppose that you want to learn the truth rather than the promotion, the, you know, carried away of maybe Pentecostalism that gets carried away sometimes about all these things that you've heard about, you know, rolling around on the floor or barking like a dog or doing kind of the dumb things that sometimes people do when they're overwhelmed. We'll talk about those things, but we're not going to chastise them. We're not going to beat them down or say that maybe they're carried away or that they have some tradition they're doing. No, because we'll look at that and we'll talk about it. We'll, you know, show you the reality of what people are experiencing and what the truth is according to scripture. But we'll also talk about what the reality is according to huh, heavenly things. Because uh, I'll be honest with you, right now, we are so practically minded, we're no heavenly good. I mean, I've got this whole systematic theology coming at me on a constant basis that's always trying to tell me, what can I use as a personal application for, you know, using in my life today? Because after all, i got to go to work, i got to get up, and i got to pay the bills. You know, and so how can I make this fit, the Word of God, into my life today? Instead of, how can I fit into the Word of God as God is telling me what to do? And He doesn't want me to be the practical example of the world and its logic. But He wants me to demonstrate Him, Jesus, in signs and wonders. I mean, not, not in them, let's be clear, but... Those things are happening around those, or through those, or with those that believe in him. And maybe they've been abused and confused because they're being used by people for their own gain, or for their own purposes, or for their own design. And dare I say, I know you. I'm going to be straight up with this transpose. Remember, this is part of a different series of the Preach in the Park. You know and I know there's more things that you don't really understand about healing and maybe about prophecy and, you know, like suddenly you know something or you don't know something, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, you know, those kind of things, you know, or even when, uh, <laughs> oh! the heavens open up, you know, you see things and you go, or maybe, the heavens open up and you thought you saw things. We're going to put a balance on there. You know, we're going to bring in Jesus and transpose his word into your experience. So that's why we transcend our own understanding. In other words, it's still using Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, really, to trust in the Lord with all our heart, leaning not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledging him and letting him direct our path. And always using as our foundation and as our explanation and as our realization the very fact that the Word of God is living and alive and is working in you, and that you were to prove all things, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. But transcend is going to give you something to think about. And I can tell you this <laughs> there's too much that happens in my life that. There is no explanation for it. But God just says, well, okay, there's the beginning of transcend. God doesn't say. God just reveals himself and lets you deal with it. Oh. So, I love, and I want to mention this one last thing and part of transcend. When you think that God can't do because he won't do anything that isn't in here, I want to give you the first rule and the first law of transcend. You know, the way we're approaching the Word of God. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Is there anything He can't do? Let's just leave it at that. The Jewish explanation is very simple. In the beginning, if God created the heavens and the earth, that's it. There isn't anything He can't do. Even when he says he won't do, he can't do, he could do, because he could go beyond what he just said that he would do, because it wouldn't contradict, because he's God. That's a logic. There's a logic block in Western culture. But in order to explain dimensionality, in order to explain the heavenly in the earthly, 
sometimes you got to say things that just maybe we don't understand what God means. And we're not trying to give some personal interpretation because it still means the same if you read it for the earthly or you read it for the heavenly. But when the heavenly invades the earthly, or somehow there's a connection, go ahead, try to explain to me how you can walk on water. Try to explain to me how you can raise the dead. Try to explain to me what happened on the Mount of Transfiguration. And you try to explain to me that none of those things happened today, and I'm going to look you straight in the eye and say, Betcha. Or better yet, I'm going to say, Bet me! Because the things that I've seen, the things that I've heard, the things that I've handled with my own hands, are why I do what he did. Because after waiting and listening and running into other people that have experienced the same things that I've experienced, that have done the same things that I've done, that God has used in different ways, in the same way, inside of, you know, the same place of faith that I'm at, Calvary Chapel, as well as really outside, some of them off the wall, you know, some of them on the wall, some of them like, you know, walking through walls, you know, some of them like, whoa, but, you know, all things being that they're learning, God has revealed something interesting to me with that. He wants to bring you closer, near, more intimate with him in a real way. And I'll be honest with you, as soon as I asked the Father, because Jesus said we could know him, you know, and then, you know, you've seen him, you've seen the Father, and I, you know, I asked the Father to reveal himself to me in, in a way that, you know, I would know that it was him and not Jesus and not the Spirit of God. That was a mistake. Well, in a way. Because he did. And it was the beginning when I thought I already knew what the fear of the Lord was. I has not seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man, things which God has prepared for him. The number one rule of that is himself. You have no idea what God is like. And so God decides to start to reveal himself. And so when we start the transcend, it doesn't mean we're going to rise up and Jesus is going to say, come up hither, and then we're going to get all holy. Oh no. If anything, one thing you learned about the Mount of Transfiguration is the valley below. Most people will teach on what happened after the val after the Mount of Transfiguration about the valley below and the disciples going through their turmoil and trials. I'm more interested in the very fact that on the Mount of Transfiguration, God came down and spoke. On the Mount of Transfiguration, Peter, James, and John saw Moses and Elijah. I'm more interested in Jesus is talking to Moses and Elijah, and we're sitting here arguing about who the two witnesses are in Christianity or Western Christianity. Somebody's messed up systematic theology in a major way because they left the supernatural out of it and they went for the natural. I'm sorry, but in Jewish logic, we go a lot farther than the systematic logistics that for some reason the parameters have been limited to something that I don't understand. So when I'm using a logic, I'm sometimes talking about item specific or integral specificity of the word itself because the word means what it means what it means. You know what I mean? If it's in Greek, it's in Greek, it's in Greek. If it's in Hebrew, it's in Hebrew, it's in Hebrew. If it's in English, it's in English, it's in English. And if God can't intervene in order to explain it, then what was the Holy Spirit for in the first place? Why do we keep saying that you can understand it when you can't unless you get a lexicon? That's the, the intervention part. There's more happening in your thinking process than you know. Even in the natural. And that's what we'll talk about. When we transcend our own limitations in order to comprehend God's intimacy and personal relationship that God wants us to have. That Jesus said, I pray that they may be one as you and I are one. So let's go there. You know, you may not be your cup of tea, and it may be too, I don't know, weird, Pentecostal, whatever for you. And that's okay. But you see, it may be just practical enough for you to understand. So that the reality will come to you and you'll say, wow. There is a reason to pursue more so after God than less so thinking I'm already arrived. Because quite frankly, one day, 
what's going to happen is you're going to be sitting here in a park, just like I am, and God's going to open your eyes to reality all around you. And it won't be the things that you're looking at right now that you can see, that you can touch, that you can feel. Because reality of heavenly things will come crashing in on you when God decides to reveal himself and to cause you to be transfigured, even as he causes you to transcend the limitations of your own understanding so that you begin to comprehend what is the height, the depth, the majesty, and the great expanse of his love for you that he has and wants to reveal his son to you in a way you've never imagined before, in a way that the disciples saw on the mount of transfiguration.